the second experiment which uh, we will perform is to verify superposition theorem and Thevenin's theorem we are not going to use uh, uh, to verify the maximum power transfer theorem what we will do in this experiment is we will just verify the Thevenin's theorem and the superposition theorem so the apparatus which we are going to use is the low voltage power supply resistance box and multimeter okay so this is our power supply and this is what you have I have a resistance box and this is our circuit and this is a multimeter okay either we can use this multimeter or you can use this a digital multimeter okay for the measurement of output fine so this is the circuit for uh, Thevenin's theorem so this is very simple circuit uh, we have uh, to give a 6 volt DC supply because plus minus DC supply and these uh, is this is 2 ohm resistance 100 ohm resistance and 600 ohm resistance and this is the load resistance which we have to vary so this is a simple circuit to verify the Thevenin's theorem so this circuit uh, this 200 100 and 600 ohm resistance is already included in the circuit so this circuit has two part this upper part and the lower part so first we are going to use the lower part of this circuit and you can see that the resistance is in between these two 200 ohm resistance is connected here 100 ohm resistance is connected here and 600 ohm resistance is connected here you can see if I if I see below the circuit so the resistance 200 ohm resistance is connected here 100 ohm resistance is connected in these two terminals and 600 is connected in these two terminals and this hole is the ground path is connected itself so just we have to use these terminals to connect the circuit because the resistance is already connected 200 100 and 100 is already connected in between so if if you if you see uh, the circuit here so so that means these two terminal these two terminals we have to connect the 6 volt dc supply and then we have 200 ohm uh, resistance is already here and then 600 ohm resistance is already there and 800 ohm resistance is already there and then in between these two terminal we have to apply the load resistance this rl rl and this is our rl okay so let's see uh, how to connect the circuit so first what we have to do is uh, we have to supply a 6 volt DC supply okay 6 volt DC between these two terminals and that we are going to give using this power supply I am going to on this power supply and we have a dual channel power supply we can have one power supply and another power supply I can use either of these so these are the input terminals of this power supply this one and this is for this power supply okay so there are certain knobs so the, the, these are the knobs uh, which if I choose these knobs so I'm going to get 0 to 10 volt and from 10 to 20 20 to 30 and this is uh, the fine knob using this I can change the voltage okay okay you can see the voltage is changing okay fine okay so we have to supply 6 volt from this terminal to uh, these two terminals and before using that whether this is giving you our 6 volt or not I'm going to use and check uh, this output output of this uh, power supply using a multimeter so multimeter I have a common common connection is there and this I can use uh, voltage you can see voltage I can measure voltage resistance ohm and frequency from this resistance this is common one so this is an off mode I have to if I have to measure the voltage I'll go to the V part okay if I have to measure the resistance I'll go to this Omega part so because I have to uh, uh, measure the voltage I'll choose the V part of this section okay now let's uh, because this is this is the positive part so I'm going to use it in the positive part of uh, this power supply and this is the common part I'm going to use in the common part of this power supply okay now let's on this circuit fine 
Now you can see that the, the reading of this is 5.4039 or here also it's 5.40 but what I have to take is 6 volt. So with the help of this fine, fine law that you can see here fine is written. So we can help of this fine I, if I can see that I have to make it 6. Okay. 6 volt. So let us make it 6 volt. Okay. You have to be careful. Now it's 6 volt. Okay. 6 volt output is there. 6 volt output is there. So this output now I am going to use here between these two terminals. Okay. Fine. Now what I am going to use is uh, I am going to use two wires. One from the positive terminal. I am going to give it here and then from the negative terminal I am going to put it here on this part okay so you can see okay so this this connection is there I have supplied 6 volt of DC supply to the circuit now this is already inside inbuilt this is inbuilt this is inbuilt this connection is already there so between these two terminals I have to put a load resistance this is my load resistance and I have one terminal of the road resistance I am going to put here between the last two terminals between the last two terminals so the second and I am going to get it, get it here the last two terminals so this circuit is complete the 6 volt is supplied from here and the resistance box I have applied so before using this resistance uh, take out the 50 ohm resistance take out the 50 ohm resistance from the resistance box and then this is okay now what I have to do is I have to measure the voltage across this load resistance okay the table you can see uh, table of obs observation is here is like this so I have to change choose the value of the load resistance RL like I have I have chosen 50 ohm here and then I have to note down the response of the original circuit that is voltage across RL so voltage across RL, I have the major the voltage across this circuit. I so this this is connected to here. I can use measure the voltage across this circuit. So for, to measure the voltage, I am going to use uh, again the multimeter, digital multimeter. So I have to choose the plus and this is the negative part of this. So I'm going to connect it to the negative part of the terminal and the positive. I'm going to use the positive part of the terminal. Okay. Let's see. So this is connected to here. Now I'm going to because I have to uh, observe the, the potential. Okay, so I'm going to use this uh, part, voltage part. Okay, and because I'm using the DC the DC input, that means I have also to use uh, the the output will be DC. Output will be DC. So. Uh, so you can see the DC is here. This is a knob to make it AC DC signal. Maybe it is on AC, so you're not going to get the current. So now uh, you can see uh, that for 50 uh, ohm, for the 50 ohm of load resistance, the output is coming out to be 0.727. So what we have to do is we have to write like for 50 ohm, for 50 ohm, the output is. 0.727 and now uh, then I'll increase the load resistance from 50 to 100 so this is my 100 ohm this is my uh, 100 ohm so now you see uh, the output changes to uh, 1.248 so again I'll write for 100 ohm for 100 ohm so this will be 1.248 for it and then for, for if I see for 150 this is 1.641 and similarly I will write for 150 ohm so this is 1.641 and similarly we keep on doing the things and then and finally you will see that uh, uh, if I take out uh, like uh, say 500 500 you can see this is 2.941 if I take 600 so this can be 3.117 if I take more 3.36 and then 3.539 
and if I keep on increasing and it becomes almost going to like constant and constant 3.9 and you can see this 4.1 keep on going okay so this is how we have to perform the experiment and we mostly we have to uh, take the load resistance till like uh, like 1500 1500 and we have to note the uh, output value of the original circuit. Original circuit means in which we have all the uh, in which we have all these three resistance. Okay. Then this is original circuit and this is the equivalent circuit. That means uh, removing all these we have to find the total resistance and the ET is the equivalent input source and the equivalent resistance and this will be the equivalent circuit for these things. So this is my original circuit and why, what I did is the response of the original circuit for all these uh, load resistance. Fine. Now we have to calculate the RT value and ET value because now in this circuit the next part of the experiment we have to make this circuit and for to make this circuit we have need to calculate the value of RT and ET. RT and ET. There are two ways to calculate it. RT we can calculate it by hand by using R3, R1 and R2. R1, R2 and R3. The value of these resistance we will put in and we will calculate by hand. Similarly, ET we can calculate. We can use 6 volt here and value of R2, R1 plus R2. Then we will we'll, we'll calculate. It comes out to be RT 256 ohm and the ET 4.48 ohm. Okay. So, you can see that uh, I can calculate it using the value of R300 ohm, 200 and this comes out to be 250 ohm and ET calculated is 6 volt, we put 6 volt, this comes, comes out to be 4.5 volts. So these are calculated values, okay, which we are, which we uh, will use in, in place of RT and ET. But I am not going to use this value of ET and RT calculated values, we have to measure these values through this original circuit and how to measure these values is to determine the value of ET and uh, RT using my original circuit and the procedure is given here. In the next uh, we will uh, try to calculate, determine the e value of ET and RT from the original circuit. So you see that uh, to uh, measure the ET value we have to remove RL. RL means the load resistance from the circuit. We have to remove RL and we have to measure uh, the value of the voltage between terminals A and B. So RL, this is my RL, this is connected to this terminal. So I am going to remove it, this RL from the circuit and we have to measure the voltage across this circuit. So I will use uh, through this multimeter, I will measure the voltage across this circuit. Okay, I will measure voltage across this circuit. So this is coming out to be 4.45 volts. So this is my ET measured ET. So I, ha I have to I have to write it down the value of major ET. ET major is coming out to be 4.45. 4 4.45 volt. Okay. So this is my major ET. Now I have to measure the RT value. So to, to measure RT you can see here we have to remove E and connect C and D. That means we have to remove this one and connect C and D and then measure this RL. C and D measure the resistance between the terminal A and B. Okay. Now, uh, now we remove E because this is coming from here. Okay. And then with the help of a wire, I have to connect this C and D. Okay, either I can connect here, short circuit this. Okay, connect here or here, doesn't matter because this is all connected. And now I will measure the resistance, equivalent resistance from here. So put this is here and this is here because I have to measure resistance to high, I have this make shift this knob from volt to omega. Okay, like this. Now, this is coming out to be a 256 or 257.7 ohm okay so this rt rt i will note it down this rt is 
257.6 ohm. So now this ET and RT value I am going to use in this equivalent circuit. Okay. So make the equivalent circuit. Fine. Now as you can see uh, we have calculated uh, ET and RT using these two formula and determine through the original circuit the value of ET and RT. The calculated value comes out to be 250 and, uh, and now the determined value of RT is 257.6 ohm as uh, the calculated manually was 250 ohm and then ET is 4.45 which is determined from uh, the circuit and this calculated comes out to be 4.50. Now we have to use this determined value of ET and RT we have to use in this equivalent circuit. Now the, this circuit ET we have supplied this ET in place of 6 volt we have supplied 4.5 volt and removing all these uh, resistance we have to use one resistance RT of the value 257.6 ohm and then you have to use this same RL values and find out the output resistance. So now what we need is this ET, RT and RL. So earlier we used the lower part of this set of box. Now uh, we are going to the upper part of this circuit in which we just have uh, the knobs. Earlier in this uh, we have 200 ohm, 100 ohm and 600 ohm of resistance were connected inside this but there is no connection of resistance box inside this. So just we have these terminals. So what we have to do is in this place is we have to uh, put the ET values which we have calculated that is 4.45 and then in between these two and uh, terminals we have to f connect the RT value which is uh, this R2 value 257 ohm. For this we need uh, another resistance box through which we can supply this uh, uh, RT values and then the load resistance is already there for us. So I have supplied this 4.45 uh, uh, volt of values from the load resistance because here it is getting 4.2 but when I measure it from this multimeter it is coming out to be 4.45 and then uh, I have to supply the 250, uh, 257.6 ohm of resistance and this is I am connect, connecting uh, 257 point this in between these two terminals of uh, okay so these 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 resistance box I am connecting supplying here in between this so in between these two terminals I have supplied the RT and this is ET equivalent ET and RT and here here I am supplying my as usual RT from uh, the low RL from the load resistance. This is RL from the, so let's say this is RL from the load resistance. This is RL from the load resistance. Now we have to take the output. For output I will use the multimeter. So this positive part goes to the positive and the negative part goes to the negative terminal. Now I have supplied here 457 ohm through this resistance box and this is I'll again start with the 50 ohm as you remember as you remember for 50 ohm we have the value of 0.727 now let, let me start this so what I will get it No, what I am getting is 0.862 volt. Okay, maybe this is because 863 volt at 50, at 50 ohm, in place of 727, it is coming out to be 862. So let us write down 862.862 ohm, and let us connect for 100. 100, how much it is coming? It's coming up to 1.309 and next is 1.309. Let us check for 150. 150 is comes out to be 1.655. This is 1.655. Now you can see uh, the response of the original circuit 
For 50 ohm it is 0.727 and the equivalent circuit is 0 0.862. For 100 ohm 1 1.24, 1.30, 1.64, 1.65. As as I will increase the resistance, the the value, the response of the original circuit and the equivalent circuit are going to be very close and close enough. So this is how we verify the Thevenier's theorem, which says that this simple circuit, the simple linear network circuit, can be replaced by the equivalent uh, resistance and the equivalent source. Okay. This is how we verify that yes, the response of the original circuit which we were getting for all these load resistance is actually coming closer to the, uh, the equivalent circuit. So this circuit and this circuit is actually equivalent to each other. Okay, So this is how uh, we verify uh, our Thevenet's theorem and next in the next uh, um, uh, part of this we will uh, verify the superposition theorem. Now we have to verify uh, the superposition theorem and the observation table for this uh, theorem is uh, this one resistance ohms voltages when E1 and E2 are in circuit and voltages when E1 is not in the circuit voltage when E2 is not in the circuit and algebraic sum. So the circuit for uh, to verify uh, the superposition theorem is like this is that now we have two sources E1 and E2 uh, of 1.5 volt each and the same circuit 200, 100 and 6 ohm resistance. So now again we are going to use the lower part of this circuit. So 1.5 volt I am going to uh, give here, 1.5 volt I am going to give here and 200, 100 and 600 ohm of this is there. So the same circuit is there, 1.5, 1.5, 200, 100 and 600. So 1.5 and 1.5 I am going to use these two source, 1, 1.5 and 1.5 I will supply to these two terminals. Okay. So let us supply it. So 1.5 positive to uh, positive terminal and then and again negative to I'll just supply it to the negative terminal fine then for the second uh, positive to the positive terminal and then negative to the negative terminal so what I did is I have supplied 1.5 volt and 1.5 volt E1 and E2 and these are the resistance already connected inside 200, 100 and 600 ohm. Okay. Now what, what <coughs> the observation table tells that so we have to measure uh, this is 100 ohm, 200 ohm and 600 ohm of resistance okay so we have to measure the voltage across these these resistance when the voltages e1 and e2 are in the circuit when i am applying both the voltage in the circuit then i have to measure the voltage across these two resistance let us measure this because uh, already i have applied uh, both the voltage e1 and e2 across these circuits so now let us measure the output voltage across these resistance so while measuring the output voltage I have to make sure uh, the polarity because this is the positive polarity red one is and the black one is the common this is COM common the negative polarity and the connection is like red here is the positive polarity and the black one is for the negative polarity okay now uh, uh, let us first m try to measure uh, the voltage across 200 ohm so I will put positive here and negative here okay okay so this is let me measure it so this is coming out to be 0 0.183 volt okay so this is across 200 ohm so let us measure point across 200 ohm point 0.183 i write written it 0 0.183 across 200 now let us uh, uh, measure it around 600 so positive to positive and negative to negative now it is minus 1.257 across 600 this is minus 1.257 and across 100 negative to negative 
and positive to positive. So, so this is point one one six. So this is point. So it is root one one six. So this is when both the E1 and E2 are in the circuit. Now let us try to observe the voltage when E1 is not in the circuit. So let us make it E1. This 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 one is E1. So let us remove the E1 from the circuit. Okay. Let us remove the E1 from the circuit. Okay. And connect it. And complete the circuit by uh, connecting it by a wire. Okay. Fine. Now. Uh, uh, the you can see the voltage across the 100, 100 ohm is 0 0.5 uh, 0 0.573 okay this is 0 0.573 okay or now let us try to measure it across 600 positive to positive negative to negative so this is minus 847, 600 minus 0 0.847 and then cross 200 negative and then positive. This is minus 854, this is minus 0.854. Now, when E2 is not in the circuit, so now when E2 is not in the circuit, so let us make E2 uh, connected circuit, circuit, and now take E2 in the circuit, introduce E2 in the circuit, and then the voltage across. Uh, 200 is 1.032 okay so this is plus 1.032 this is positive and the voltage across 600 is minus 399 so this is minus 0.399 I have noted it down and across uh, 100 it is minus 452 so this is minus 0 0.452 so now these are the responses of the circuit when both the uh, sources E1 and E2 are in the circuit when E1 is not in the circuit and when E2 is not in the circuit now this is the algebraic sum okay so if if I do the algebraic sum of these two, and I must get this one. When the E1 is in the circuit, not in the circuit, and when E2 is not in the circuit. And if I sum all these two, then I must get when the both are in the circuit, then our superposition theorem is verified. So now uh, you can see that yeah, this is uh, 0 0.573. I write 0 0.573, and this is minus 0.452 this is minus 0.452 so 1 2 and then 1 0.121 okay this is 0 0.121 plus because 573 is is coming out to be 0 0.121 and it was when e1 and e2 both in the circuit it was 0 0.116 now if we sum minus 0.845 and 1.03 if I do this so this is uh, minus 0.845 and this is 1.032 so this is 1.032 if I do this 7 8 1 okay so this comes to a point 187. So this is point 187. And similarly for this minus 847 minus 399. So this is minus 847 minus 0 0.847 
and minus 0.399. So this is now such Sula number Choda Igbal. This is 1.246. Okay, so this is minus 1.246. Now you can see that uh, the response of the circuit when both E1 and E2 were in the circuit is actually the algebraic sum very close to the algebraic sum of the response of the circuit across these resistance when E1 and E2 were individually in the circuit. So this is how we verify the superposition theorem. So this is all about uh, uh, this experiment in which we have verified uh, the superposition theorem as well as the Thevenin's theorem. Thank you.